Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to another Red or Not video. In this Red or Not video, we're going to be going into the details of the new spalling effect that was added in the last major update for Ready or Not. We're going to be discussing on whether or not spalling is a real threat, a real danger within the game. I got inspired to create this video. I saw a Ready or Not video that kind of went into the details of some oversights with equipment, some assumptions that have been made, have been made by myself as well. And I did learn a little bit of knowledge with this, but there was some unpopular opinion, some things that I disagreed with. And I thought I would share my opinions on the topic with the ceramic versus uh, steel armor plates. As of right now, in the current version of the game, steel armor plates provide the best ballistic protection that is available. This is obviously at the trade-off of movement speed, which is a problem in its own for being able to safely move in and out of cover while taking fire, as well as moving through thresholds. However, that's not the biggest danger we're dealing with with steel armor. Recently, like I said before, in this last major update, they introduced spalling. For those of you that don't know what spalling is, is, this is a new thing for you, I'm going to explain it. Spalling occurs when rounds penetrate steel armor and they tend to radiate bullet fragments away from the point of impact after making contact which can cause secondary injuries. When rounds collide with AR-500 or AR-550 steel, it liquefies most of the round while some pieces such as the core tend to break into fragments. Obviously, I'm quoting, you know, real life spalling. This is something that happens with real steel armor in real life. These fragments that move beyond the plate could hit a person wearing body armor in the neck, head, or lower body. Nowadays, most steel body armor plates are coated with an anti-spalling coating, which assists in preventing spalling from occurring. However, it is unlikely, but it's still possible for fragments to happen. And ready or not, it doesn't seem prevalent that steel armor has any anti-spalling coating at all. This is, I'm assuming, set in place as a balancing purpose in order to prevent players from choosing the best armor available with little disadvantages. However, what's strange to me is the idea that ready or not is attempting to be an extremely realistic SWAT style game, but is counteracting this with adding balancing and causing high damage spalling effects. From what we have tested, the spalling from steel armor is so dangerous that you're almost always guaranteed to get hit with fragmented rounds if the person next to you is hit while wearing steel plates. However, for whatever reason, the developers set this up so that the user, i.e. the one wearing the plate carrier with the steel plates, is unaffected by the spalling while teammates take the full brunt of the damage. And it gets worse from here with the ballistic shields. The shields also have this same spalling effect which tends to not only fragment off of the shield, but also bounce between the shield and the steel armor, doing even more damage to the team. Now in conclusion, it's an obvious choice to completely avoid using steel armor plates and utilize the ceramic plates instead. It may not protect you as much as steel, but at least you'll be quicker on your feet and won't have to worry about being the reason the guy next to you catches a bullet. Now this is going to be rather daunting and completely ridiculous to a lot of people, but another concern worth mentioning while doing testing involves the use of ballistic face masks. Now a lot of assumptions have been made over the time period that Ready or Not has been in development, but I've always Always assume that ballistic face masks only protect you from small caliber rounds like 9mm. I also had the assumption that the ballistic face mask was heavy and weighed you down just like the heavy armor used to. However, we did some testing and we were completely wrong with this theory. The ballistic face mask has little to no negative effect on movement and also absolutely tanks rifle rounds. The tests were pretty inconsistent, ranging from 3-6 to six rifle shots before our test subject died. With AP, we noticed the mask would take anywhere from 3-6 to six rounds, both with small caliber pistol rounds and rifle rounds, primarily testing with the HK416 rifle and the Glock. When we tried utilizing JHP, the results were similar, but we noticed the inconsistency was so bad we were ranging anywhere from 3 rounds to 15 rounds for both pistol 
and rifle rounds. Sometimes the pistol was outperforming the rifle in terms of number of rounds to kill. Furthermore, we decided to test out various other face masks that are currently available. We were absolutely shocked when we found out the gas mask somehow has the capability to protect you from firearms. The gas mask could take anywhere from one to five rounds, which was also extremely inconsistent of course at this point we had to try out everything else as well and we continued to be disappointed and concerned with our results the anti-flash goggles providing ballistic protection from both pistol and rifle rounds anywhere from one to four rounds each now this is obviously a huge issue and we hope void interactive gets a quick peek at this video and realizes the massive issues here concluding all of that a steel armor hands down is something that you'd want to stay away from until they do something with that spalling effect I don't know if they're going to implement some type of coating and I guess simulate anti-coating and make it so that spalling happens way less frequently and maybe give us a little more movement speed. But as of right now, I'll be honest, I don't know why people are saying that steel armor is, is the better preference for armor here. I, I just don't get it. I'm going to take ceramic any day, even if it takes less rounds. I have a little bit more movement speed and I'm not hurting my teammates when I'm getting hit by rounds. As far as the masks, especially, you know, the ballistic mask, I think that thing should only be graded for pistol rounds. Uh, I don't have a lot of research as to how those ballistic masks work, but from my personal knowledge, I do know that those are typically rated for pistol rounds like 9x18, 9x19. Those are not rated to take rifle rounds at all. If this game is striving to be realistic, I think the devs need to take a step back and start reanalyzing. Either way, that's going to be the end of the video. I'm pretty sure we touched up on everything here that was worth discussing. I'm curious to hear you guys' opinions down in the comments. Please Please let me know what you think again sincerely hope you guys enjoyed thank you for sticking to the end and we'll see you in the next video